Yesterday saw authorities seize a significant quantity of cash from two Toyota Yaris vehicles at the port of Duras, with sources confirming the 3.4 million euro is believed to have been accumulated from criminal activity in Belgium. Before the final decision to open Albania's EU negotiations, Germany wants more work to be done on electoral reform and vetting, thus giving a conditional yes to open negotiations, though there are still reservations. The external area at the premises of the Academy of Sciences has seen a new statue erected alongside academic Alex Buda, with famous sculptor Hector Dule providing the bust of Eterim Chabay. It's 6 o'clock on Monday the 25th of June 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. About 3,470,000 euros has been seized, found in two Toyota Yaris cars at the port of Duras. Sources have specified that the cars in question were three-door models with the boot or trunk used to store the cash. From first investigations, it has been determined that the vehicles had been driven from Belgium, transiting through Ancona in Italy. It was the Interpol of Roma that sent the signal to Albania, putting the wheels of the prosecution and law enforcement bodies into motion. A ferry holding the vehicles arrived from Ancona last Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Firstly, it was suspected there would be 1.5 million euros in a vehicle placed on a nine-car carrier that would then be sent to Kosovo. But following a further verification, a second car was discovered. After the counts, the experts have specified that the full amount of euros found. A verification is also complete, proving that the cash is not counterfeit. It has also been learned that the banknotes were of the values 20, 50 and 100. The police stopped three people regarding the cars, including the driver, Agim Cheka, the manager of the transport company, Edi Lika, and his son, Clevis Lika. The remaining arrest warrants were issued in the name of Alban Mola Umri, who was captured, as well as for two other individuals with the initials AV and EV, who are still at large. The police say that the company administrator has stated that he was unaware of the cargo with the aim of only carrying the vehicle. He stated that he was contracted by a businessman whose name is still unknown. The Democratic Party chair, who forewarned last Thursday of the cars full of euro that would be caught on Sunday at the port of Duras, says the money belongs to one of the main drug trafficking gangs in Elbasan. Speaking to the media after the Democratic Party parliamentary group meeting, Lul Zimbasha said the guarantor for the 3.4 million euros entry into our country came from the chair of the Socialist Party's parliamentary group, Talent Bala. This money is evidence once more of the most dangerous drug trafficking gangs based mainly in Elbasan, but present all over Albania. Secondly, Talent Bala had an agreement to guarantee this money would enter Albania without problems. Thirdly, the Albanian police were under pressure from one of our partners to act. It was one of our partner countries who are sceptical of Albania's conditions for integration, especially the fight against crime and corruption, said Lul Zimbasha. But was the criminal mastermind forewarned of the seizure? Of course, this was Talon Bala's plan. The structures within the state police and the Albanian parliament have been overrun. The aim here was to bring this collaboration with one of Elbasan's leading drug gangs to an end and capture millions of euros and drugs for Albania. The lid was left off this investigation without a doubt. We have a former interior minister, the head of drug trafficking, that was released by Eddie Rama, who is the chief prosecutor and chief judge. We have another interior minister who tries to justify that his brother is a convicted drug trafficker. And now we have the SP parliamentary group chairman, the secretary general of the SP, involved in money laundering. What links Saimir Tahiri, Fatmir Jafai, Talan Bala and Erion Veliai with Eddie Rama, who is the boss of all bosses? Drug trafficking, money laundering and tower building, remarked Lul Zimbasha. At the Health Commission, the agenda was for some changes in the law against family violence dominated, as well as the political debate on the issue of the 3.4 million euros seized at the port of Duras. The opposition in the Parliamentary Commission said that Edilika, the trailer Aruna arrested by the police, had already been sentenced by the Court of Appeals with six months of imprisonment for family violence. Based on this, it was suggested that if he was going to jail, it was unlikely he would be used for drug trafficking. As the leader of the Commission, 
position after Petrit Vasili was absent, SP MP Elisa Spiropali demanded that the facts be denounced at the prosecutor's office. The commission could not function normally due to the verbal confrontations between the majority and the opposition delivered in harsh tones. As such, the meeting was interrupted and upon the return to discussion, Spiropali said that the behaviour of the MPs requires a public apology. Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Kotsias expressed his optimism about resolving issues that are ongoing with Albania. However, in an interview given for Euraktiv, he has called on the opposition parties of both countries to not react hysterically. Referring to the negotiations with Albania, he emphasised that a number of small issues were solved, especially those that facilitate workers or migrants from Albania. Now we have the big issues, Kotsias continued. In Athens, we met the Joint Commission of Experts and we made a big step forward, he assessed. The Greek diplomatic chief has again stated that during the Athens and Tirana negotiations, we have never discussed the Chum issue. We do not discuss this at all. In this debate, there was never a question of Chamria, Kotsias said. He adds that there was another Greek government that first discussed Chamria in the early 1990s. There are witnesses who were present in those discussions and can today present themselves as if they just entered politics and have no past, said Kotsias targeting the Greek Conservative opposition, which was in power in the early 1990s. Kotsias also emphasised support for the launch of the integration negotiations for Albania and Macedonia. I am afraid that if we do not give a date for the opening of the negotiations on northern Macedonia, we could put at risk the effort we made with bigger fines and compromises on both sides. Further, if one of the two countries starts negotiations, let's say for example Albania is left out, this will create a situation of instability in the region, determined the Greek Foreign Minister. The German Bundestag set a conditional yes to open negotiations with Albania, taking into consideration electoral reform and the vetting process. At a meeting held for good governance, the director of the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, Walter Gloss, said that these two processes are still, still hold reservations. He underlined that scepticism is being increased even after the Dutch Parliament's decision. The German Bundestag provided a conditional yes to Albania. The decision will be closely related to electoral reform and vetting for judges and prosecutors. Although justice and electoral reform are progressing, we have reservations. I am sceptical of opening negotiations because no positive news is coming from the Netherlands, said Walter Gloss. Gloss informed that Germany is making a contribution to electoral reform and that they expect a final draft in autumn. Electoral reform is very important to us as we have contributed and are continuing to give our experience. We wish to have a final draft by autumn, said Walter Gloss. The director of the Konrad Adenauer Foundation said the decision to open Macedonia's nego negotiations was easier to facilitate as the conditions in this case differ. Today, the mayor of Tirana, Arion Veliai, held the second public hearing on the issue of the National Theatre in the presence of artists, architects and urban planners. Veliai proposed the establishment of a group of artist representatives who will have the opportunity to negotiate in the discussions on the new National Theatre project and the development of the surrounding area. Mayor Veliai made a parallel with the construction of the National Arena, where he said that if, it, if there was a UEFA for theatres, then it would not be certified because of the standards it currently offers. Just like in the previous hearing, this time there were, uh, there were artists who expressed their interest in the construction of the new theatre, as well as others who defended the prospect of reconstruction. Arben Imami, who spoke on behalf of the independent artists, expressed the pros of building a new theatre, but not altering the property around it. On the other hand, actor Neritan Lichai, on behalf of the Civic Alliance for the Theatre's Defence, said there would be no consensus with anyone unless the draft law for the collapse of the National Theatre is removed. After Lichai's speech, Viliai said he was ordered by the DP to make such statements. In opposition of constructing a new theatre is also the actor Buriar Kapajiu, who believes that reconstruction is the best way forward. Representatives of the fire service at the meeting considered the theatre standards unacceptable for use. After about four hours of discussion, Mayor Arion Veliai requested ongoing meetings in order to find some common ground.
The bust of the well-known Albanian researcher and literarian Eterim Chabe has been erected today on the premises of the Academy of Sciences. Attending this event, Prime Minister Edi Rama demanded that during the nation nationwide year of Skanderberg, the bachelor's PhD thesis of Chabe be noted, as according to him, it will bring qualitative debate on albanology. Considering it as one of the most difficult speeches that he has ever given, the head of the government raised the image of Eterim Chabe and his valuable contribution to Albanian culture. Surely if he were here, Eterim Chabe would have given us, without a doubt, the proper word or phrase in our language for this reference. However, Hector Dule's skill has come to sculpt for eternity what could not be summed up in a sentence or in a paragraph. That is what Eterim Chabe left as the oxygen in the veins of the Albanian language, said Eddie Rama. As mentioned in the Prime Minister's speech, the bust of Eterim Chabe is the work of prominent sculptor Hector Dule. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.